how many's alive? Now, now I say that because I, I, as y'all know, I preach my, all my notes are on my iPad, and I and I turned it on, and I got a notification at the top from Facebook, and said Charleston First Assembly is live now. Now, we may be live by that we're live on the air. But there's more than just being live on there. How many's live and living this morning? Amen. I, you sound like it. I'm excited about this word today. I, we, we've talked about all in, and uh, I, this is our next step. All in in prayer and spiritual warfare. If you don't think you're on a battleground, You better get back to prayer. Because, <laughs> honey, we on a battleground. Daily. Daily it's a battle. The forces of hell are attacking the forces of heaven, but they know they're defeated. <laughs> we sometimes don't know how victorious we are, and we let the, the, what we see affect what we know. I know whom I have believed in. But I got to do more than just know. It says, and I am persuaded. When you're persuaded, you're convinced. That don't mean that anything that's going to hit you is going to affect what you know. Because when you know something, nothing can challenge that. I know whom I have believed in, and I am persuaded that he is. How many know that he is this morning? There's no second guessing that he is. Tank, as you said, he reminded God, God, you said. We're going to talk about what God said to us this morning. Take your Bibles to go to the book of 2 Corinthians. Let me, let me just let you know and be reminded about the battleground we're on. So uh, um, just one more couple of quick announcements as you're turning to 2 Corinthians 10. And at least I was trying to, I, I think, and, I, and so I got to go uh, to that just to make sure I announced this correctly in the date. There it is. Just as a reminder that, uh, let me tell you, there's a battleground with, with, our, with unborn children. Thank God our president this past week, I believe it was, uh, stood before the crowd that marched for life. Let me tell you. I mean, that, that, that is awesome. I mean, you know, sometimes we let things just kind of sear our thoughts and well, we're just used to it. Let me tell you, don't you ever get used to uh, knowing that babies are being killed. Thousands upon thousands a day are being killed because of, quote, inconvenience. Conception, at the point of conception is where the choice is. Anybody here have said, God, I'm yours, everything I got? So that tells me you don't have a choice over your body. I don't care what the world tells you. I don't care what politics tells you. My body belongs to the Lord. The Bible says I am a temple of the Holy Spirit of God. That has nothing to do with politics. That has because my God is a whole lot bigger than politics. I'm not getting into politics. My God is on the throne, and, and God says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. And so that means even little baby, well, they try to get you with the thought as well as just a fetus. It doesn't feel anything. Let me tell you, that's a lie from hell. That's a baby. So with that in mind, we have one of some of our new folks within the church, Les and Lisa, they, uh, she's a part of... Um, and I'm trying to get this right, Lisa, uh, and, and uh, that there's a banquet coming up. And if you want to be a part of it, Lisa, raise your hand. Right, right back there, Les, right there beside her. And uh, we love you guys. And she's a part of the, uh, with the uh, sanctity of life and, and life. And I, I'm, I'm not announcing it right and getting it right. But, but if you want to be a part, there's a banquet. She's got two tables. And if you want to be a part of that after church, she'll be around here. See her, and uh, she'll let you know all about it. Just wanted to. Just put that in there because, folks, thank God that people are standing up. I think this, Lisa, what was this march? Like the 50th, 75th, I don't forget the anniversary of it. 47th year of marching for life. <laughs> Praise God. So uh, it's a battleground. There's a lot of battlegrounds. Okay, go to 2 Corinthians 10. Whew. Wow. God is good. For though we walk in the world... We do not wage war 
as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. How many likes that? Demolish means to demolish, destroy. Verse 5 says, 2 Corinthians 10, we demolish, destroy arguments and every pretension or lie that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now up in your notes, and these uh, notes are, my, the scriptures are up there, guys. In Ephesians 6.10, I want you to notice the first couple of verses here. It says, finally, or if you've got time to turn it, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that what? You can take your stand, stand against the devil's schemes. Go to verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Turn to somebody and say, my problem is not with you. But who's it against? It's the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Look at verse 13. Did I leave verse th what? I left verse 13 now, didn't I? It says, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, what? Stand firm. Amen? Shout with me. It's my ground. God has given to me. In every place, the sole of my foot shall tread upon. God says, it's mine. Amen? Father, thank you. For the word, the anointing of the Spirit of God in this place today, in Jesus' name, amen. Somebody shout loud, amen, this morning, give him praise, hallelujah. Well, glory, therefore put on the whole armor of God, so when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. The day's here. There's several things, I'm going to jump right in. I don't have an intro. Scripture was my intro this morning. <laughs> there are several things that you've got to do. You've got to realize, yes, this is, this is a battleground. This is, there are things that you've got to fight against. Sometimes we see it and think it's people or situations, but there is a plan. Just as we know that God has uh, uh, got a plan for our life and for our future, how many understand Satan has a plan for your life and to destroy your future? Not just in an individual way, but also corporately as a church. God's got a plan for us. Satan is going to be at, let me tell you, Satan don't like the vision that God has given us. Satan doesn't like the decision that this is a year the year of commitment, the year of being all in, not just after December the 31st, 2020, starting 2021, we're going to go back to where we were. Come on. This is a year bringing us out to bring us in to what all God has for us. There's something special what God is saying to us. But there are several things I believe that we can see and glean from this passage of Scripture. The first thing is this. you got to pray up. Somebody say it with me. Pray up. See, prayer brings victory over Satan. Matthew, Mark 9, 28. And I, I have a lot of scriptures. I'm on some that you don't, uh, maybe won't take time to be able to get to as quick. So just, just hang in there with me. If you can write them down or see it up here, whatever. Mark 9, 28, 29 says, And we had come into the house. His disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast, why could we not cast this demon out? Basically, is what, the, what was happening here. And he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but what? prayer and fasting. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I, I, uh, I've read, I'm, as I've told y'all, Cheryl and I are reading uh, together in, in the Word and got a, a reading plan for, for this year. And uh, we encourage you to say, well, I hadn't started that yet. Start today. You need to read the Word. We'll get to that later. But 
We, uh, one of the parts in the book of Acts, it, it talks about the seven sons of Sceva. They, they saw all that, that Paul and Silas and, and others were doing, and they, 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 they thought they could uh, mimic that and have that same kind of power. But more importantly, they wanted the notoriety of what they had accomplished, what they wanted to accomplish, and people see it. And so they tried to cast out the devil of, of this individual, and, and uh, demon spoke, and he said, because they said, in the name of, of Paul, and, and Jesus, whom Paul preaches, we cast you out. And the devil spoke out. The seven sons of Sceva heard, says, Paul, I know, and Jesus, I know, but who are you? You don't need to have a demon be tell, asking who are you when you're coming against the demonic of hell. The demonic of hell needs to know that you are a blood-bought, Holy Ghost filled, filled with the power of God, and that you've got the goods inside of you. When you're casting out a devil, it doesn't need to be the time when you're wondering whether you're built up in God or not. Prayer up. Prayer brings victory over Satan. So he said to them, it only comes out by prayer and fasting. Robert O., he said, you cannot win without praying. The spiritual war rages on daily, whether we want it or not. It's like saying, you cannot win a battle if you don't fight. You cannot win a swim competition without jumping into the water. You cannot win a surfing competition up on the mountain. You can't win the Tour de France in Hawaii. The point is, is that you need to do and be where it counts. And that's prayer. You've got to jump in. You can't just, as I talked last week, put a little bit in and take it back out. You've got to jump in and be a prayer warrior. Don't be just dependent on those, well, I know they pray. Yeah, they may pray, but how about you? Well, I'm just not a prayer warrior. Well, why not? It's all our decision. Intimacy, as we talked last week, is a choice. Ephesians 6, 12 again says, For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the, the whole or full armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So, and then verse 18, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Dr. Cho said it this way. Dr. Yogi Cho said, when Christians pray, the work of the Holy Spirit is manifested, and the forces of the devil are demolished, and circumstances are changed. Just like Tank, when he, when he shared the illustration, when he prayed and reminded God of what he said, God did the miraculous. How many want the miraculous to overcome in your life? Then pray. Robert O. said, if someone you know is demonized and full of sin, to which church would you take him? A prayerless church or a praying church? We know the answer to that. But the real issue with the small, with the church growth movement in America is not about the growth aspect, but it's really about the essence of a church. Let me tell you, what a church is is not just to align itself with the culture of this age. What a church is is what God began it and says, my house will be called a house of prayer. We've got to be set free from prayerlessness and become powerful prayer warriors. The Christian life without an authentic and life-changing prayer is neither authentic nor is it life-changing. But if you want something to change, you better pray. Don't just wait for Sunday. Have church where you're at right then and there and say, God, in the name of Jesus. Dick Eastman said it this way. He said, some things happen when I pray that don't happen if I don't pray. The world is ruled by the enemy and the Word of God, and, but the, and the Word of God says that he seeks to devour us like a roaring lion. So then how can we walk out to such a hostile environment without getting ready for it? We all know the, uh, know the history of Martin Luther, the reformer. He once says that he prays one hour a day to go through the day and prays three hours a day to be victorious of the devil. <laughs> I'm not saying you got to pray four hours a day, but honey, I'm telling you, you better put prayer back in your arsenal because you will never defeat the devil of hell with your ability to talk him out and con him out of trying to attack you. But I'm telling you, those that know the Lord shall do great exploits. Conditioning ourselves to pray daily is crucial. It's kind of like an athlete in constant training. And the Bible even says to exercise yourself toward godliness. 
All the great world-class achievers did not accomplish them casually or accidentally. Because without discipline, I know that's a dirty word. Discipline. Say it with me. Discipline. That means to put things, your life in order and be consistent. Some things you've got to take off in order to go where Jesus calls you to go to. And so all the world great class achievers in sports, they discipline themselves. But without discipline, you cannot really be good at anything. And it's kind of the same way with prayer. You cannot casually become a prayer warrior. You have to give yourself to prayer and discipline yourself to pray. Because that's what Jesus did, didn't he? Come on, how many want to be prayer warriors in the house? Secondly, not only you got to pray up. Everybody say pray up. Secondly, somebody say, stand up. up. Ephesians 6, 13 says, take the whole armor of God. And verse 14 says, stand therefore. Stand. When you've done all else to stand, stand. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, therefore, my dear brother, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Come on, I hope this gets in your crawl this morning. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Sometimes all you can do is just stand. You don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to act. You don't know how to respond, except you know God says to stand firm. Devil, you cannot move me. I'm like a tree that stands by the water. I shall not be moved. But in order for you to stand, you've got to get to the end of yourself. Okay, come on, I want you to hear me now. It's not you, it's not about you, it's not your strength, it's not your coolness, it's not your badness. It's not your abilities that gives you the power to stand up to Satan. Because we on our own are no match for him by ourselves. But that's why scripture so prolifically says it today. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. We are on the train with Jesus Christ this morning. And he has every authority. Because the word says all authority has been given to him. And if he resides in me, that means the authority of Christ is in in my life. And I can say, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Okay, let's do a little exercise here. How many got problems today? All right. Put your problems right here. You got them? Now slap them over here. All right, problems are going here. Now they're right here. You ready? Didn't I feel good to slap them? <laughs> Y'all do anything I ask you to do with you. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I want you to look at them. How many has got a mental picture of what's been attacking you? I want you to tell them this. Devil. I'm standing. I have authority, and I overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Greater is he than he that in me, than he that is in the world. I mean, still looking at your problems. Now turn it over. Now, some of you want to grasp them back because all you do for living is dealing with your problems. You don't know what to do if you didn't have problems. Sometimes we spend less time living with Jesus because we're all worried about our problems. We're more concerned about rebuking this and, oh, I'm just so bad. It's just, I just can't. It's just, I'm just under. I just, who told you you're under? That's the demonic. He lied to you. Let your problems go. Don't worry any longer. They're gone. If you're a child of God, they're under the blood of Jesus Christ. They may try to turn around and say, no, 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 no. God says, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. God says, I have authority. Stand. Stand. Sometimes you just got to stand. You just have to choose to say no. 
To stand firm, we must strip off every device of the carnal man, every weapon and strategy of the flesh we have used. We must put off our own ideas and strategies and put on God's armor and strategy for fighting in the spiritual realm. So take off lies and put on truth. Put away sin and put on righteousness. Get your guilt and death and put it on salvation and eternal life. Get rid of your strife and put on the peace of God. Get the doubt out of the way and unbelief and put on faith of God. We must put away ignorance and put on the knowledge of the Word of God and walk and stand in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Under, unfortunately, too many believers have not possessed the promises and blessings of God because they got tired of the struggle and they quit. Two of the greatest tactics of the devil are discouragement and exhaustion. Some of y'all got up still discouraged today. You went to bed depressed and discouraged, and you got up depressed and discouraged. Why? Well, my problem's still there. Why are you allowing them to be there? Speak to your problem and tell your problem how big your God is, not how, how big your problem is to God. Tell your problem how big your God is. I want you, I want to, I want you to look at a scripture. It's not on the screen, but... Uh, but I, I, if you want to turn there, 1 Peter 5, 8, 9, I'm going to go ahead and share it, tell you what it says. 1 Peter 5, 8, 9 says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around looking like a, around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. He's looking for someone to devour. That doesn't mean he has to devour you. He's looking for someone to devour. God says, verse 9, resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. There is a lion out to, to, to eat you up, <laughs> but blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. We have the authority of God and say, I'm not on your menu list today. Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Everybody say, pray up, pray up. stand up, stand up. thirdly, suit up. <laughs> you got to put on the armor of God, not just pieces of it, but you got to put on all of it. Ephesians 6, 12 and third following, I'm going to start then in verse number uh, 14. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. How many has got... I mean, I got, have I got it on? Now, some of y'all just think, I, I can't do that. I, that. That's crazy looking. You want to be crazy looking or you, you know, come on. We, we're getting rid of some demons today, amen? amen? Come on, put the belt of truth on. Put the belt of truth on. Then it says, and then uh, put on the breastplate of righteousness. How many righteous people in the house this morning? So, well, I, I don't feel, didn't feel too righteous this past week. I didn't say what you felt. I'm saying how many righteous people in the house this morning. Righteous is not based on your righteousness. Righteousness is based on his righteousness. And when God declared you clean, you were clean. Old things are passed away and all things have been made new. Because if you're starting your battle from a place of guilt and remorse and thinking, I've got to change all that, I've got to fix all that, then you were starting in a lesser spot. You need to start from wholeness, not from destruction over here. And as a child of God, when you're battling the devil, you don't need to be weak in battling his his. Ability. Say, well, I am weak. I get that. But if you're operating with the authority of God, that means there's a strongness inside of you that overpowers your weakness. And when I'm weak, then I'm made strong because Jesus is in me. And if he is in me, then I am strong. You got it? How many strong today? How many righteous today? How many ready to take a, 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 a water gun to hell? <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, ladies. God has put within us an ability, not a pridefulness, not a, hey, I got this. No, you don't got this. God's got this. And we don't, it's not that we have him, he has us. Maybe I'll use the wrong word there, has us. <laughs> And if he has us, and I've taken up my cross, and I've denied myself, we talked about this last week, and I'm following him, that I can say I can do all things through Christ that, what? Come on, you got it now, amen? So I put the righteousness on. And then it says, you know, I'm getting so ahead of myself here. Let me go back to the belt of truth. <laughs> let, me, let, let me share something to you. 
Roman soldiers girded their waist with something similar to what a weightlifter wears to give him strength. You ever seen these weightlifters? They got this belt on them. And these crazy guys, it was never my intent to bench 800 pounds, 400 pounds. I just don't want to get up off the bench. I will never have this. Do I want that? No, just have somebody with that around me. <laughs> I, I, I have never been this. I, I've done some weight stuff. and I had, I had one of my uh, deacons in my last church uh, years ago. He bought me a gym membership, and he said, and he, he, Danny McDuffie, he was, he was the stuff. I mean, he, he was buff. And uh, he said, I'll train you. <laughs> I met with him early morning, and it, uh, he started, oh, I was puny. I, it was not puny in size. I was just flabby. And uh, don't say anything, please. And so I, I had nothing here. But I could tell after a while, I went from one level of weights those 10 pounds to 20 pounds was really not hard at all. No, I'm kidding. I, I mean, it, it changed as I began to walk in a little bit of discipline. Now, it didn't last long. Because <laughs> you see, I don't have that. He got that. Some of y'all, some, okay. It, take, it takes a motivation that I know some of you say, oh, come on, Pastor, you could do it. I know I could. The issue is the want to. I've had different ones try to help me out, and they, they probably just got upset and just went away. <laughs> hey, but I can run. No, I can't run. I can, I can walk. <laughs> but it all goes back down to a want to. Come on, am I right? When you want to do something and you have the desire to do something, you'll get out of the stuff that kept you there. Now, I don't... I don't think I would ever get up and want to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning just to go to the weight room. But there are people that get up early. You go look at some of these places that are open 24-7. They're up early working out before they go to work. Yay, come on, give it to me. Not, you know. <laughs> but it, it is an amazing discipline. I, I, I mean, I, I celebrate you. That's awesome. You, I mean... That is awesome. I'm not where I need to be, but one day I'm not going to be where I was. <laughs> and I know I've got, there's discipline involved. Here's the point. As long as you want to stay bad on your problems, go ahead. But at some point, something has to change where you stop doing what you were doing so you can receive something. That is kind of a, it, uh, what's the word, lunacy or, or what, that you want something changed but keep doing the same thing. What's the word? Insanity. There's some insane Christians, and I've been there and probably still am in a lot of ways. We want stuff to change, but we are not willing to change what's causing us the problems. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. So put on the belt of truth. It's got that weight lifter. How did I get there? It was a weight lifter. That's what it was. <laughs> because he won't support, so he won't hurt the core of his body. And, and what that did, that belt, it enabled not just the weight lifter, but it enabled the soldiers to stand stronger against their enemies. And, and we've got to realize that that kind of support to give us strength in our spiritual core. See, there's a spiritual core, just like there's a physical core that you've got to get your gut strong. I mean, to do, uh, let me tell you, most of us probably now, if I, I'm not going to do any setup uh, uh, things here. I'm not going to do any push-ups because I'll embarrass myself. But most of us, we probably can't do a whole lot of setups because our core is weak. How many's ever done a setup? How many ever, some of y'all ain't raising your hand. How many of you ever wanted to do a setup? That's probably nobody. <laughs> but in order to get in shape, you've got to strengthen that core. And the thing about it is, that's what truth does. There is a spiritual core in your gut, supernaturally speaking. And that core is the truth of the Word of God. 
and what God says and who he is. And we've got to have that kind of support, that spiritual core, that strength. When you know the truth, the truth will set you what? That means we must rightly and tightly surround ourselves with truth and not allow for anything other than the truth to enter our thank you situation. Let's get rid of the lies in our mind, all the things. And it means asking God to keep us undeceived so that we never allow deception to take root. Because knowing the truth liberates us from the possibility of deception and eliminates darkness in our life. And that doesn't mean that you just know about the truth. It means it is that you know it so much that it becomes a part of you and you live it. It's not just any truth that sets you free. It's God's truth. So, everybody put the belt on. Everybody got it on? How many feel good? God said, if you abide in my word and you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth, the truth will set you free. The enemy lies to you, but if you know the truth... You'll know how to overcome every demonic deception in your life. Secondly, there's the breastplate. Come on, put the breastplate on. How many has got it on? The breastplate. A Roman soldier's metal breastplate covered his chest. It kept him from being fatally wounded in the heart. And that's what the righteousness of Jesus Christ does. It's what covers our heart. And that is what God sees when he looks at us. But we still have to put on righteousness like a soldier puts on a bulletproof vest. In other words, that means we choose to live God's way. If you choose to take the righteousness off and live your own way, that means you won't be protected if you deliberately walk outside the ways and will of God. Well, I'm, I, I'm trusting God, but I'm going to do my own thing. No, you're not trusting God. You're trusting yourself. Because the righteousness of Jesus Christ puts us in. Here, I want you to hear this. The righteousness of Jesus puts us in the spiritual position to choose the right things. How many know there's wrong things and right things to choose? We've all chosen wrong things at times after becoming children of God. But God says choose the right things, to do the right things, and say the right things, and stand holy and spotless before the enemy. It's the breastplate of righteousness. When the devil tells you you ain't saved and you're worthless, tell him, hey, devil, Jesus, he's going to talk to you. (laughs) Stand in the righteousness of God. Stand with the belt of truth. Come on. How many's got your shoes? What are shoes for? Thank you, D. Shoes are for your feet. <laughs> wow. Aren't y'all glad you got that? Sp- no, that's your right. It's for your feet. But other than that, what? Say it again. Protects the feet. Men, how many of you have a closet full of shoes? Some of you guys do. But if I change that and I use the other gender, I'm not, it's just reality. My wife has more shoes than I do. I have a black pair, a brown pair. A pair of tennis shoes, I just bought a new casual pair, and I'll wear them out. I'll maybe wear some of the different shirts. Cheryl will say, where'd you get those at? I say, I just don't wear them. They're in my closet. But there are those that buy shoes. They match every outfit according to the shoe. Now, I want to tell you something that I saw years ago. One of my professors, when I was at Southeastern, which is now Southeastern University, one of my professors, I was, there was a lake, there was, Lakeland was full of lakes, and uh, there was Lake Hollingsworth, and, and I was there one day, and I actually, I saw this with my own eyes. One of my professors, he was jogging with a full suit on and had dress shoes on. Don't ask me why. He was one of our professors at Southeastern, one of our, our uh, I, think, I think he was vice president. I don't know why he was doing that, but he was. Let me tell you, I don't go jogging in my dress shoes. I have my tennis shoes on. Well, I don't go jogging, but I have my tennis. <laughs> y'all, y'all probably already thought that, didn't you? But God says to do what? Put on. Put on. That means you 
specifically, mentally, and physically, you put your gospel shoes of peace on. Now, there are some people in this house that maybe you got rough feet. You got feet that, that you can walk out on the dirt and sand and rocks and pavement. I, I, I got weak feet. I, I don't know what you would call it. I, walking on little pebbles, it, it just kills. I had to have shoes on. I can't. I don't like anything. I don't, I don't like anything messing my feet up. I, you know, I, I, just, I just don't. I can't. My feet are not strong. I don't know why. I mean, there are those that can walk on, on rough parts and, and it doesn't hurt them at all. I, I, I can't. I, it, it hurts. If I got to have some shoes on. Let me tell you, you want to walk where God tells you to walk at? You've got to have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. You've got to have God's shoes on. And what God's shoes are is the gospel of peace. Come on. When you put on the shoes, it's a reminder that wherever I go, God leads me with a peace. That, that I don't have to worry and be, be all uh, hyped up about anxiousness and, and what's going on. But he said, in everything by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. And the what? Peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your heart. So when you're walking, you've got peace. That peace becomes like an umpire. And God says, no, 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 don't walk that way. Not pieces over here and God redirects you and you've got the gospel shoes on if you don't have his shoes on then you're going to find yourself all messed up in every all kind of situations but if you get the right shoes on to you are you tracking with me if you have the shoes on that God says put on no matter what's happening in your life you can have the peace of God that passes all understanding I gotta I gotta end everybody take up the shield of faith See, the shield of faith, every soldier needs something to shield and protect them from the weapons. And those weapons in those biblical times were shot, they got shot at with flaming arrows and darts over protective walls to, to destroy people when, and to uh, set people and buildings on fire. And in the same way, the Bible says the enemy is shooting darts of fire and, and things against us. And, and he shoots spiritual arrows and, and designed to pierce our heart with discouragement and make us fearful and make us anxious, make us uncertain or incapacitated. But the shield, come on, somebody ought to lift a shield up this morning. The spiritual shield of faith. By faith we move mountains. The shield of faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. I don't see it all the time. I don't feel it all the time. But God God sees it. And the Bible says, he that cometh to me must be God, uh, to God. He comes in faith. There are some things you're not going to feel and see. But I love the scripture in Hebrews chapter 11. I believe it's Hebrews eleven six. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of those that what? Diligently seek him come on how many's got your shield of faith up you got your shoes on you got your righteousness on you got your peace on but there's some more things everybody take your hands you got to put your helmet on the helmet of salvation the helmet protects a soldier's head our spiritual helmet protects our head as well and what does our head need protection from the demonic lies and the attacks that begins right here. Every one of you were lied to this week. Every one of you were tempted. Don't tell me how spiritual you are. I know. Every one of us. Every one of us had some sort of word, temptation, or whatever that hit us. And we may, had to make a decision whether we're going to keep thinking that way or whether we're going to keep the helmet of salvation. And uh, uh, so it affects my mind. Salvation is not a one-time thing. Oh, I'm saved. I got fire insurance. No, 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 no. I'm saved because I want the righteousness of God to affect every area of my life. I want his blood to go before me. I want his mind to be in me. And I want to know when something's truth and when something's a lie he wants you the devil himself to be blinded everything Jesus has done and will do for you but it's your choice come on how many wants the protection of your mind this morning God says let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus and then there's another piece of the armor you ready It helps when you do the sound effect. It just sounds much better. Ready? That's your shield coming out of the, 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 the hold. Some of you just might need to stand up to do that. It just looks better. Sound You don't have to do it. No, no, no. 
That means most of the times you don't need to put down in there anyway. You just need to keep it up. You got to take up the shield of faith. You got to take up the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. Amen? Are you reading the Word? Are you applying the Word? Satan tried to destroy Jesus when he was born by inspiring wicked King Herod to kill all the babies in Bethlehem. And 30 years later, when Jesus was baptized and led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, Satan attacked him again. And, and Satan just said, if you'll do this, I'll do this. And Jesus said on all occasions, said, the word, it is written. This is your sword, defensively and offensively. This is your sword. Praise team, would you come? This is the sword that God has given you the ability to stand under the anointing of Jesus Christ to declare, thus saith the Lord. Put on the word like a protective garment every morning. Speak the word. Pray the word. Live the word. And let it live in you so it becomes part of your armor. How many's got your shoes on? How many's got your belt on? How many got your righteousness on? How many got the shield of faith? And how many's got the sword of the Spirit? Last one. Say, I thought that's all the armor. Well, there's another piece. It's called what comes out of here. It says, and praying the Spirit on all occasions. It says, praying the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers or requests. Sometimes our prayers and requests are loud. Sometimes they're about things that are just all kind of things. But God says pray in the Spirit on all kind of prayer. Come on, folks. You need Holy Ghost inside of you to pray in the Spirit. He said be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Because he said in the same way prayer is essential in the ongoing warfare, Paul, God is saying pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Come on. Everybody around you, everybody that you see, everybody, pray for them. Pray. I mean, you don't know what else to do. Pray. I mean, you don't know what to say. Just pray Jesus. Come on, amen. Why don't you stand with me? Say, Pastor, what's the rest of them? Well, glad you asked. You've got to pray up. Secondly, you've got to stand up. Talking about warfare. Thirdly, you got to suit up. Fourthly, you got to speak up. Declare what God says without fear. Declare what God says about you. How many's got a mouth? How many's got a tongue? Forms those words. Sometimes we let them form from our emotions, but let them form from the Word of God. Sometimes we let our words be formed and come out as a result of what is happiness happening to us in that moment when the demonic is attacking. And we, we're, under, we're under the guise of fear, the, the deception of fear. But it's in that moment when you want to step out in fear, maybe, because you're, you don't know what's going to happen, you need to step back and step really once again out in what the Word of God says. The devil, God says, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Sometimes we walk in fear, and we don't know how to deal with that, and we, we allow the cascading demonic flood to hit us. Maybe with that addiction, we don't know how to overcome that. And we think, well, I tried to get free one time, and it'll just, it'll just keep, it just keeps coming back. I, I might as well give in because I, I just don't know what to do. That's a lie from hell. The scripture says, the Lord is my light. Whom shall I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? So speak up. Declare what God says without fear. Because of Jesus, I am a child of God. I am a spiritual contributor, not a spiritual consumer. 
because of Jesus, I am alive. I am a faith-filled, life-speaking, fully devoted follower of Christ. I am the ambassador of Christ. Because of Christ, I am a masterpiece. Because of Christ, I'm content in the love and the power and the strength of Christ alone. Because of Christ, I am chosen, not forsaken. I'm determined to love God and people with everything I have. I am a child of God. I'm strengthened by God who upholds me, protects me, defends me. See what I'm saying? How many, you know, amen? I am joyful. I'm gentle. I'm not easily offended and will not hold on to bitterness or grudges. I am patient. Because of Christ, I'm faithful, I'm self-controlled, I'm kind, I'm known. How many want to get in on this? Because of Christ, I'm not alone. God is with me. Because of Christ, I am loved. I am fierce in confidence and boldness because God is with me. I am free. I am healed. I'm not ashamed. I'm called and equipped to go after the righteous desires that God puts in my heart. Because of Christ, I am strong. I am fearless. I'm secure. I'm not a people pleaser because I answer to God first and seek to please Him. Because of Christ, see, I'm speaking boldly. I am a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things have been made new. I'm not in guilt any longer remorse. I'm in love and forgiveness and in faith, not in fear. Because of Christ, I'm a new creation. I am not shaken. I am not stuck in worry because Jesus offers a peace this world cannot give. I am born again. I am more than a conqueror. I am named by God and not labeled by man. Because of Christ, I am the light of the world. I am mighty in his power. And I am the church. And I exist for the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because of Christ, I am a warrior. I stand firm even when the pain is crippling because God is my strength. And I will fight the good fight for what matters most because of Christ. Speak up. And this is what we're about to do. Lastly, everybody say, lift up the name of Jesus. Paul wrote at the last part of Ephesians 6, verse 23 and 24, he says, Peace to the brothers and sisters and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, grace to all who love our Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ with an undying love. Anybody here just love Jesus with all your heart and all your soul? Could you lift him up today? Could you just glorify him this morning? (laughs) Because the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is going to take some really, some spiritual gumption inside of you, what I'm about to say. But I'm not going to ask you to come just by yourself. Many of you a while ago lifted your hand and said, I got a problem. I got some issues. If we really were all honest. probably 100% in this room has something Satan is attacking you with. Because there's not days on the calendar that that Satan says, oh, I can't attack him on that day. That's a non-attack week. See, that sounds stupid, Pastor. No, but the reality is every one of us, don't look at people that you think are, oh, there's something, they're, 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 they're just not under attack because they're so spiritual. Let me tell you, it's amazing what being so spiritual can cover up. Now, I don't mean that to say just because somebody lifts their hand they, and they're praying out loud that they're covering up something. But every one of us, I, can tell you, I can't tell you how many times I come up on this pulpit and think, you know, I, I don't feel it. And if you can't handle that, I'm just being honest. But I find out when I pray through my problems and I praise Him through my doubts and I lift up the name of Jesus through my hurts, That don't mean the problems are immediately gone, but my perspective of them changes from a perspective of them to a perspective of God. And I put on the armor of God and realize that God's got a whole lot more for me than just mulling around in my little junk. Am I helping somebody this morning? If you got an issue, 
I want you to come. I want you to just come step around this place. If you don't have an issue, I want you to come. Because really, I know you got some issues. You just ain't telling everybody. And that's okay. So really, that's 100%. I'm challenging everybody. Because we're going we're gonna to fight this battle together. We're not going to be alone. We're going to fight this battle together. Come on. If you want to lift up the name of Jesus, I want you to step out. Now, if you physically can't be here, I understand. Don't, don't, don't. I, I get that. But we're we, we going to fight the battle. Because I, I want you to know you're not alone. Come on, push on in, guys. Push on in. Push on in. Push on in. Push on in. Come on, come on. Everybody come on close. Come on. Just, just get up right close. Uh, they, they're not going to hurt you. Come on. Every one of us, every one of us need each other and encouragement that comes from God. And encouragement from each other. As Paul said, grace and peace to all of you who love the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, would, he, he even said, pray for me that I can share this message boldly. I want you to look around. Every one of you in this room are in dire need of every one of you in this room. And every one of us in this room are in constant need of the incredible presence of of the Lord Jesus Christ every moment. You cannot make it without the presence of a, the Holy God. I know you know that, but it sure does help being reminded from time to time. Let me tell you, I'm proud of all of you because you know Jesus. You came forward. Now you say, well, I did because you told me to. No. <laughs> you could have stayed back there, but you something called you forward. Let me tell you, Something, something brought you. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than anybody. It's something is depth in you. So I challenge you today. Pray up. I challenge you to stand up. I challenge you to suit up. I challenge you to speak up. And then I challenge you to lift up name of Jesus. Could we do that? Come on, lift your hands all the way across this house. And thank Him for the power of the Lord Jesus Christ that is surrounding you.